believe Justin Fry has been named a uh, new Ohio State offensive line coach via UCLA. Does this appear to be a decent move? Well, yeah, this is a guy that uh, Ryan Day is well acquainted with. They worked together for one season at Temple and two seasons at Boston College when Ryan Day was the offensive coordinator at those two schools. And uh, seems like he's getting his guy uh, to run the offensive line. Seems like somewhat of a backstep for Fry. He was the offensive coordinator at UCLA, but almost certainly an upgrade in pay. And he'll be the offensive line coach and the associate head coach at Ohio State. Uh, he is from Indiana originally, uh, played college football at Indiana in the early 2000s, was an offensive lineman, and uh, 15 years now as a college uh, coach. And so he brings some experience and uh, enthusiasm. And from the way I understand it, he is already out there on the recruiting trail, uh, making contacts with uh, key prospects for the Buckeyes going forward. So I think all of that sounds like a, a good start for him as the uh, as the head coach or as the uh, offensive offensive line coach and associate head coach for the Buckeyes. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Anything else on this, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, it's important that he's already kind of getting out there and recruiting for Ohio State. We come out of the dead period here in two days, but that doesn't mean that you can't have contact. It just means you can't have kids on campus. Um, obviously it'll be very important for him to start building those relationships with the 23s, Ohio State and UCLA, not necessarily always overlapping in terms of the players that they're going after. Uh, Ohio State certainly has much more of a national reach than UCLA does, but, you know, I have a feeling somebody like Justin Fry probably knows a guy or two over at, uh, St. John Bosco and some of those West coast schools just due to the proximity but you know, I think it's I think it's a really solid move, and you know, I'm not here to uh, to, to to bury Greg Studrawa. He you know he did a good job of uh, of development of players. I think the weakest point of his ass of what he was able to do was that he wasn't a very good recruiter. But neither was his predecessor. Uh, Ed Warner was a horrible recruiter. So if you know if Ohio State's able to get 85 percent of the production and 3x of the recruiting, uh, you know, this is a huge win. So, uh, you know, and I don't think anybody should just be jumping right in and saying, well, now suddenly Ohio State is just going to be able to fix this overnight. That's, you know, that's not necessarily how any of this works. That's not what anybody's expecting with Jim Knowles on the defensive side of the ball either. But, uh, you know, I, I think that this is a huge, uh, a, a huge gain for Ohio State with the addition of Fry. Tony, how goes it? Uh, well, I would just, we got Tony Gerdeman here, Buckeye Scoop. Yes, thank you. Uh, and if you guys didn't address this, I would just like to say that, that Justin Fry, also the the associate head coach for the Ohio State offense, not to be confused with Tony Alford being the assistant head coach for the Ohio State offense, or Larry Johnson being the associate head coach for the defense. I'm confusing myself, but. Uh, these titles are fun. <laughs> well, when we look at offensive line play, as soon as Studuara was, uh, and I know I butchered his last name, uh, was let go, I'm thinking, what was the offensive line performance this year? We know that uh, if you if you pick up any of your two-bit magazines or whether you think they are the the gospel truth of college football – Ohio State's got a top five offensive line in the country. I don't know if they just slap those together and say, Ohio State's always there. Alabama's always do, 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 do. There you go. Oh, we've heard some good things about so-and-so, so we're going to bump them up. Uh, Iowa State's going to be really good this year, so we'll notch them up. I'm sure there's some of that done, but there's some legitimate research into it. And then just looking at the play on the field, Steve, the <clears throat> Michigan game was disappointing, of course. Uh, I think the – the microcosm of that was coming out of halftime and trying to say, we're going to punch you in the mouth. We're going to run the ball. You were physical in the first half. We're going to be physical in the second half. And it just didn't work, uh, at least for a short span of time. It's not like they, they rushed the ball 20 times. They, nor did the score dictate that they could really try to establish a running game because they got behind and the defense couldn't stop anyone. Uh, but at the same time, that would be the one game that I would say, OK, there were some offensive line issues. And I know early in the year, the Oregon game, um, 
they still rang up 600 plus yards of total offense. But uh, when I think of any of these units and the coach that's responsible for that particular unit, I think recruiting, development of them as players, and then what, whatever role they have in conjunction with the offensive coordinator in game planning for that particular unit uh, for an opponent. And that's what the job entails. Yeah, it's kind of crazy if the defense had been better and had a way to contain Oregon or a way to contain Michigan, and Ohio State outscores those teams. You know, for that's obviously the object of this game is to score more points at the end of the day. Had they been able to do that, you just wonder if Greg Studraw would still be the offensive line coach at Ohio State. But in those games where Ohio State needed to hit 50 points or 40 points to win those games and couldn't do it, their shortcomings on the offensive line were kind of, uh, you know, born, you know, bore the brunt of the criticism, uh, giving up the sacks at Michigan, inability to run the ball when you want to run the ball in both of those losses. And, uh, you know, again, I, I don't know, again, where to put the blame with all of this. If, if he was the guy who wanted them to play, quote, four offensive tackles, or was this something Kevin Wilson insisted on and Ryan Day and he went along with it? Or was he the one pounding the table saying they were better with Dewan Jones at tackle than with Matthew Jones at guard and Thayer Munford at tackle? I don't know. But uh, one way or another, a change was made. Uh, they said Ohio State favored zone blocking schemes this past year for the for the most part, whereas Fry's specialty seems to be gap blocking. So uh, take that all into uh, account one way or the other, uh, if that's going to be more effective in, in a way for Ohio State to establish the run when they want to run the football and, uh, you know, second and nine still be able to, to run it and get six or seven yards. That's what you want to be able to do. So uh, to my way of thinking, this brings in a guy that uh, they trusts, that they've worked together before, they're on the same page with what they want to do with their offense. And uh, to my way of thinking, uh, it's going to be a better better showing. Even though you're losing the, the two tackles, Munford and Petit Frere, off to the NFL, there's no reason why um, – well, I guess Munford played guard this past year. Uh, there's no reason why um, the offensive line can't be as good or better next year with how it's going to be constituted. So uh, I look for good things coming with uh, Justin Fry as the, as the offensive line coach.